mine, I mean, it's just like all my memories are just voices and just tiny moments holding my hand in a garden and stuff. You know, you have much more to yeah. go on. Yeah. Uh, oh, but goodness. certainly when it comes to humour, my dad was definitely the funny one in the family. Was he? Yeah, and my dad and my brother and I would uh, riff together riff, for yeah. the amusement of my mum, who was the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum has no timing. But is she funny in retrospect? Yeah, no, she's not funny at all. She's <laughs> entirely passive. And just loves and waits. You know, she wants you to come home so that she can get a cup of tea on the go and get a fag on the go. And if you sit. did an imitation of her, would she think it was really funny? Yes, she would, and I do. And in fact, I personally, I mean, I don't know about you, but I use comedy a lot in my life as a parent as a daughter it's a relief isn't it it you is to get around a tricky situation with exactly your kids that. and stuff and sometimes i know i'm doing it too much i think don't use this you know in your family when you were little was it funny surprisingly i think with comics an awful lot of comics that you meet are quite depressive um, and quite sort of ego-led and i think i'm talking about men more than i'm talking about women yeah is my dad a depressive? No, he isn't. And is it funny at home? Yes, but it's a, t a, a particular type of funny. He likes the opening the door and pretending he's banged his head kind of funny. <laughs> or coming through with some hilarious, big, slightly vaudeville-style gag. Whereas Mum's side... Sicker. I used to pull faces, that's what I was good at. My mother used to say, go and pull us one of your faces, and I'd go in the back kitchen and think of a face and come back and pull it. Impressions of people? No, no, no. Or just I was about four. Faces. I was okay. about four. Funny faces, a funny face. This is my long, luxurious blonde hair. <laughs> Ain't it pretty? Yeah. I could put it in a ponytail, wanna see? Yeah. No. <laughs> you do? I had three brothers, mm -hmm. and you. Were you funny? No, I don't think I was funny. I don't remember being funny. It wasn't, I didn't, I don't think I was funny until I met you, obviously. I don't think I was very funny. I think I was a very serious person. I think I still am. I might have to disagree with you there, oh. just on the evidence that I've had. Oh. <laughs> um, I particularly wasn't one of those children that said, I want to go to ballet and I want to have a pink dress and then I want to make all my relatives mentally ill at Christmas by insisting on performing extremely long tranches of dance while they're trying to have their dinner. Um, sorry, what's wrong with that? Ah, the, oh. did you do that? Yes, and it got me to a very good place, thank you very much. <laughs> the only thing I ever did was read acceptance speeches for the Oscar. <laughs> It's all, that was my thing, is every year everyone was subjected to my thanking people. We used to have lots of big family parties, and it, and it would be this thing that the kids would have to entertain. Like, do a little play or do something, because kids like to do that. And I, used to, I just remember thinking, God, I cannot wait until I get to the age where I'm no longer required <laughs> to do this. A big part of family get-together was the kids doing their turn. Being Indian kids, a lot of them would do maths long division or, you know, <laughs> this is how I do a tracheotomy with a pen because I wanted to be a surgeon. But me, I did uh, paper roses on the guitar. I always did kind of things on a more professional level, cousins bar mitzvahs and I, I liked a real stage with a real band. What, what age were you when you were performing at bar mitzvahs then? Eight or nine or ten. Really? Yeah. I would just get up and, you know, and, and my cousin Bernice insisted, you know, that I get up and, and I took the, uh, the microphone from the band leader. He was singing Hello, Dolly, and I said, you're doing it all wrong. And this guy was, like, ready to smack me, bitch slap me. But B cousin Bernice put her foot down and said, you let her sing right now. And did you sing Hello, Dolly? Yeah, I did. Oh, Brought the house down. I would love to see that. I wish I had it. <laughs> Who doesn't? I used to look about with my friend Diane. Diane used to put me in a pram, scoop all my hair really tight into a very, very tight bobble hat um, with a little dolly and wheel me up and down the Essex Road and tell everyone I was a baby <laughs> because I've got an extremely high forehead and no eyebrows. But I was a real exhibitionist, though. Were you? I was. Did you create the laughs? I tried to. I did a Christmas song every year oh, with dear. a doll. A Christmas sing... song with a doll. Yeah, every single year. Where was your I hand would... with the doll? Where'd you, where'd you <laughs> it was. It? it was up. It was up. Up, up, up its. It. Up its back. What yeah. was the song? Um, we're a couple of swells.
Yeah. Suddenly it's gone very Mel can't then. work unless she's either got a hand up something or has equally been invaded by a human hand into her darkest recess. Oh, and that's how we that's, got yeah. together. And that's why you'll only see my left hand. <laughs> Out and then she's virtually inanimate. She won't say anything. I am. I yeah. She goes, and then hang on. Got her again. Never got to do the school performances and plays because my mum was Nigerian, very academic. So there was none of that drama. Because I remember a drama teacher saying to me as a kid, you're, you're really good. You could really. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. But if I do drama, I can't do physics. And I know which one my mum's going to choose. So my mum chose all my options. Right, they're going to do physics biology and chemistry because I'm going to be a doctor. When you were doing your acceptance speeches, people were laughing, presumably, inside the house. Yeah. And did you love that? Well, I don't think I did. I think I wanted them to take me much more seriously than they seemed to be taking me, but I, I know that I was making acceptance speeches for just the idea of, of being in the movies and accepting things. And it, when I talked to them now, they said, well, they, they knew that this was the path I was going to go on because I'd never name any movie in particular. I just thank people for letting me win. I had clubs, uh, organizations against others, against the golfers who uh, we backed onto a golf course. I set up a club against them, Anti-Golfers Association. <laughs> the golfers didn't like us being there because uh, it was dangerous. So what we did was we used to sing at them. <laughs> Is this for the group of other ten-year-olds? Yeah, a small group. And uh, we used to sing. Shall I tell you what we used to sing? Because yes, we thought please. it was quite an aggressive song. <laughs> Nelly the elephant packed her trunk. Like that. Against them. <laughs> That's early political awareness, isn't it? made you laugh. I came out of the womb with hair, and I think that's a sign. <laughs> that you're a werewolf? <laughs> what <laughs> of? A sign of wanting attention. And that's, I think, what the whole of my life has been. It's been getting attention and making people laugh, I hope. I felt that the way to get love and affection and, and, and approval and to be somebody was to make them laugh. So laughter was, it was, I found it was a great tool and a great protector. If you've never learned to laugh, then how would you ever be funny? Have you got funny relatives? I've got an auntie and it's quite funny because she's my auntie, she's family, she's my mum's cousin and it, I have to think hard to think about her name. As a kid, I used to think her name was Auntie Mbalam. But it wasn't. I found out years later that her name isn't Mbalam. Her name was Auntie Inbalam because she used to live in Balam. <laughs> Do you think that um, anybody who knew you then, would they have described you as a funny person? No. Weird. Just very weird. OK. Yeah, because they do it now. They go, you know what? You were weird. Yeah. And wait, you said you were shy as a little kid. Do, yeah. do you think, are you still shy? Yes. That's why I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I live on top of a mountain. Yeah. You know. Uh, but I'm, I, can, I can handle things in certain contexts. That's why I can perform. I'm happy to perform. I can do that, and that's my social time. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm the most okay. social. I can meet a lot of people at one time, and then I don't have to see anybody for like nine months. I remember actually going for a walk with a boyfriend and, and making him laugh, and he, and he was astonished that I. He said, "Oh, you, oh," he said, "Oh, you have got a sense of humour. You are funny." But I don't think I knew. I wouldn't have known where to put it. I think I was sort of quite serious, quite serious for quite a long time. But kind of on the one hand, slightly head girly. On the other hand, off my head. I hope I was. Vaguely amusing. I don't think, I don't get it. I mean, wasn't the class clown or anything. Were you a bit of a clown? Yeah. I was like a class clown. The unofficial class clown, because I didn't want the title, because if it got back to my parents that I was a class clown, then, you know, I'd be in, be in trouble for that. I say, Monica, oh. you're still not at school, are you? Oh, yeah. How long has it been now? Well, I've been there for 37 years, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that's daft, Monica. How can you be at school for 37 years? Well, it's just that I've been kept in rather a lot. <laughs> I was a class clown, Dawn. Um, <laughs> With a red nose. 